If you are thinking about selling digital products online, in this video, I'm gonna explain to you how I deliver digital files when I sell them through third-party platforms. The focus here is on getting large files to your customers when you have upload limits on platforms like Etsy or when you're creating bundles from existing products. So let's go ahead and get started. So in order to do this, you're gonna need four things. You need number one, the digital product, of course. Digital products are products that are delivered digitally via download. So there's nothing physical that you're sending. Your customer is gonna purchase the product and they're gonna download it directly from the internet rather than having something shipped to them. Uh, these are things like graphics, templates, eBooks, printables, art prints, and things like that. But as long as the product can be delivered via download, you're working with a digital product. Now, things like courses are also digital products, but the delivery for those is uh, gonna be a lot different than what I'm gonna show you here. The second thing you're gonna need is a platform to display and sell your digital products. These are places like Etsy, Creative Market, Design Cuts, and places like that for someone who's selling graphics and templates. The third thing you're gonna need is storage, where the actual product is stored. Uh, these are things like Dropbox, Google Drive, Amazon Web Services, Mediafire, those types of things. And then finally, the thing that's gonna bring everything together is a link and support document. So I'm gonna walk through with you how you would create something like that. So I like to look at the link support document as the key to the actual product. It's gonna contain um, a lot of information about how they can contact you for support, for service and downloading and things like that. But it's also gonna contain the link to the product. So it's gonna have a direct download link to uh, whatever it is that you sold on that platform. This is something that usually comes in a PDF format, RTF, rich, rich text format, or something like that. My preference is a PDF because you can add it photos and do a lot of different things like that that you can't really do with RTF, but RTF is also acceptable. If you do have InDesign, have access to InDesign, that would probably be the best thing, but you can also do this inside of Word and then use something like PDF escape to add your links in after the fact and I'll kind of take you through a little bit of that as well. So what I'm going to do is walk you through how I set up for new products where your digital product is over the upload limit. I know platforms uh, such as Etsy uh, have like a five meg upload limit, something like that. And if you're selling graphics and digital products, your files are going to be a lot bigger than five megs. So I'll show you how to get around that upload limit and then also I'll show you how to set up bundles of existing products. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you through my licensing document. I have a product right here and this is just a basic PSD. It's like a background or something. And then I have my support document here that I use. Let me go ahead and open this. And you can see um, it has all the basic information, how to use the product, how to contact me, my website, my YouTube channel, my, you know, my email list, all of this stuff that somebody might find useful. And then I have my questions and support. So, um, you know, all of my contact information and all of that is there. I have my hours just in case they have a problem with the download itself. Um, they need to be able to contact me for anything that they need. So this is gonna be a part of your package. So this is the product, this is the support information, and then you would just get those, compress these two items. We're gonna make a, a file. Um, I'm gonna rename it. This is the product that we're gonna upload, but you can see that it is 9.1 megs right here. So I'm not gonna be able to upload this to Etsy directly. So what we're gonna do is upload this to a separate storage. So I wanna take you through some of the cloud storage companies um, that I know of. This one I've never used before, Mediafire, but I have purchased products and, and I've seen that people use this. I didn't really like the idea of this because there's a lot of ads on it. You don't know what to click because it might be an ad or something. So I didn't like that um, style in Mediafire, but it looks like, because uh, I kind of scrolled through this and it says that there's no ads, so maybe you know, they've updated this since I uh, last 
downloaded something using a media fire another cloud storage that you can look at is dropbox this one's a pretty popular one i used to use this a lot when i first started selling digital products but um dropbox is a pretty easy one to use so if i go in here so all you have to do is come over here to these three dots and then click share and it'll give you a link that's the link that you're going to use on your link support document which is what we're going to get into next um, i want to show you the one that i use though this is uh, google drive this is actually my drive that i use currently you can see that i have 100 gigs here i pay a dollar 99 a month for 100 gigs i only use 11.6 at the moment i'm not using a lot of this so i have a lot of room to grow with this one uh, but even if you get 200 gigs, I believe it's like only $2.99 a month. So I'm going to come in here to the free web graphics kit. So I wanted to show you. So I have inside of my free web graphics, a Photoshop tools, templates, and then all of this other stuff right here. These are all products that are inside of my shop. And I'm gonna quickly just show you how I would upload a product. I have this product that we just created a while ago and all I'm gonna do is grab it. I already know what folder I want it to go in. I want it to go in this uh, you know, website graphics folder and I'm just gonna grab it and drag it over. When I open this back up, you're gonna see right here on the side that it's um, uploading this. So once you have it in, I have this product. It says one upload complete. Now I'm gonna find it. This is all organized alphabetically. Here it is. So we've got product. I'm gonna right click on this product and I'm gonna click on get shareable link. Now it's telling me link sharing is turned on. Anyone with the link can now view. That means anybody, I'm gonna make sure that it's on. That means anybody with this link right here can download that product. So I'm just going to come over here, Command and C on my keyboard to copy it. I, I need that link in order to move on to the next step. It doesn't matter what cloud storage you're using. You're going to be able to get these links like this in order to share your files. We can go ahead and get started on our product link page. Now that we have that link all ready to go, we have our document in our cloud storage. We can come in and these are actually my templates. This, this is what I actually use uh, when I do something like this. So I have this right here. This is a for a single product. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that. All right, so this is an actual product that I have for sale in my shop, but um, I'm just gonna, you know, kind of go through this just to give you an example. So what I would do is add an image, the dis probably the main display image that I used on the platform that I'm selling on. And that would go right here. And then I would have, you know, thanks for downloading the name of the product, uh, some information here about how to download their product, the actual link to the product right here, and then some other information about other ways that they can either contact us, join our list, you know, direct contact here. And then right here, I would just click on this. I'm gonna right click and then I'll go over here to the hyperlinks and I'm gonna edit this. This is a URL that I'm using. So I'm gonna go Command V or Control V on a PC just to add that link in there. This is the link to our product that we're selling. Once I have this in there, I can just come up to file. Again, this is just using InDesign. If you don't have InDesign, you can also do this with the Word document and I'm gonna show you how to do that here in a minute. But we can go for InDesign, we'll go to file, export. I'm just gonna call this product page uh, and I'm gonna put it on my desktop and then I'll just go ahead and click export now I can come down here and somewhere here I'm gonna have this product there it is right there okay so right here I have this product uh, link page and this document right here is what I'm gonna use to upload to my platform so if I want to upload to Etsy or creative market or whatever this is what I'm uploading if you're already uploading to Etsy I think you know you kind of understand how to upload products so with this instead of uploading the actual product you're uploading something like this like a link page so I'm gonna open this. So they'll download this, open this. It's gonna have a product display here, the product itself, and then this download link. So they'll click on that download link and it's gonna bring them to this. This is our product 
that we created earlier. Okay, but once they get to this page, they can just click on download and it's just going to download it to their downloads folder or wherever they specify that they want that product to go. And now they have the actual product. This is for a single product. I also want to show you how to set up a bundle here. I don't have to move anything around or do anything like that in here. If I want to create a bundle, what I usually do is just, you know, get the links to each one of the things that I want. So if I come over here to web graphics, and I want to make a bundle for my clip art, but I'm not, I don't want to have all of these in there. I just want these strokes. So I want to make all four of these a bundle. What I'm going to do is just come in here, right click, you know, get the shareable link to each one of these products. I'm going to save those links and then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to go back into InDesign or Word or whatever. And I'm going to set up something like this. I'm going to open this. What I did was I made a display uh, for this and it has all of the same information on here that I would have in a single product page. They can either download the entire thing right here. If I have a folder set up, if I don't, I would remove this right here and then I'd add this second page. So it would give you an image, a display image of the individual product right here and then a download link for each one of those products here. Now the reason that I would do it this way versus um, just having one download with a, just a da direct download button is that um, this right here comes in handy for people when they're downloading big bundles because they can get an idea of what the product is. They get a lot of information here about the product itself and then they can download just that. Sometimes you buy a bundle and you only want, you know, two or three of the products, uh, but you, you bought the entire bundle and you got all of this other stuff. You can download it at a later point, but this allows people to pick and choose what they want versus having to download all of that stuff onto their computer. And not only that, but this makes it uh, a lot easier to have this reference rather than taking all of the time to download everything. They can just download this reference right here and whenever they have the time or the need for the products, they can come in and download them. So this right here is just a lot more convenient for uh, the person purchasing your product. And uh, with this, you don't have to create new files so all you'd have to do here is just grab the link and then set it up with each one of these. In fact, you don't probably don't even need this page. I like to keep it because, you know, you get to add all of this information here. Just remove this, this, you know, big download button. So if you create something like this inside of a Word document, what you would do is just come in here. I'm going to insert some shapes, maybe uh, just a box like that and I'm going to insert a text box and then we're going to go ahead and insert another text box right here. This is going to be our download button. So it'd be, you know, something like this. It's going to say download or whatever you want it to say. Of course, it'd be formatted a lot nicer than this. But right now I just want to show you more or less how this is going to work. Okay, so right here, I just want to show you how to add the link right away. So I, we would make sure that this box is selected and we're going to go to insert and then click on link and we'll just uh, command and paste in there and click OK. So now this has become a link. We're going to come over here, go to file, save as, and I'm going to save it as a PDF and it's called doc one. So I'm going to export that bring that down. So let's look for doc one. Okay. I've got this doc one PDF here and you can see sometimes that link is not very reliable with the word document. So sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Let me make sure I got this. Yeah. So the link is in there, but, um, it just is not working for some reason. But what you can do if you don't have InDesign is create this inside of Word, you know, save it as a PDF and then uh, go over to PDF Escape, uh, pdfescape.com 
and then you would drop your PDF here, choose a file. I'm gonna choose that uh, doc one PDF, make sure it's the PDF and then click open. And then it's gonna show me a preview of my document. And what I can do from here is uh, create links from here. So I can just highlight this area right here and then add the link. Click OK. And then we'll save and download this document. We're again gonna put it back on the desktop. This time it's doc one and then one in parentheses. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that and see if this came out a little bit better. So we'll come over here. Okay, so this is the one that we need. And when we come in here, you can see now that that link is there. And then we can just go ahead and click on that link and we're here with our product. And then again, just download. If you'd like to see a tutorial on how to create the link support document for either InDesign or Word, leave me a comment down at the bottom. If you like this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel and visit prettywebs.com for more design resources and tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching.